So we saw in the earlier module how to arrive at one dimensional absorbing boundary condition. I also mentioned in the case of the one dimensional problem the reflection is going to be actually ideal as in 0 because we can pretty much arrange the value of delta t and delta x in such a manner we can make the reflection go to 0. But this is not going to be the case in higher dimensional problems like in the case of two dimensional or three dimensional problem. So we are going to see how we can extend this idea to a two dimensional case and that will be the focus of this module. So let us start with a two dimensional problem where we have a 2D wave equation given by this u of x comma y. So u is going to have x and y dependence and u naught is the magnitude of u and e power minus j x k x plus y k y is going to be the spatial dependence in the x and y direction. And now from elementary mathematics we know that for a wave equation of this sort the k value can be split into k x and k y and they are given by the value k x is equal to k multiplied by cos theta and k y is equal to k multiplied by sin theta. So the value of the theta is going to be very important to know what is going to be and we can see that from the illustration here theta is nothing but the angle at which the incident wave is going to impinge the boundary. So in this case we have absorbing boundary condition all around it is a 2D problem and there is going to be a source and then the wave is going to come and hit at this particular boundary and this is the theta we are talking about. Obviously when it comes and hits here it is going to get reflected and it will have a theta here and getting reflected and has a theta here. So we are not going to talk about all the different thetas we are going to talk about first one thing and then we can get a generalized equation for other angle of incidence at different boundaries of the absorbing boundaries that we are considering. So let us consider the first theta which is here and we will write it as a separate sheet. So this is the normal and this is the angle of incidence. So what we are going to see is this is the x axis and this is the y axis and we are simulating this infinite domain using this finite space what we have shown in this figure and now we can write the same way the partial differentiation of the solution u of x comma y with respect to x and get an expression for that that is what we are going to do now. So we will start with the solution of u of x comma y which is equal to u naught e power minus j x k x plus y k y and now I am going to differentiate it u with respect to x. So what we have got is minus j k x and then u naught e power minus j x k x plus y k y and again this is nothing but u of x itself. So we can write the equation as follows in a simple way and here the kx value is going to be the value that we have written before we are substituting the value kx equal to k cos theta and we have substituted the value for u of x comma y for this entire u naught e minus j x k x plus y k y and now if we put the value theta equal to 0 we see that we get the standard equation that we got in the case of one dimensional wave equation that we solved in the first part of this module for a 1D ABC. So this is same as what we had in the case of one dimensional ABC which is here and what we have done is only substituted the value for J and K so for example what we have got here is DU of DX is equal to minus J K 
u of x comma y and I can substitute the value k equal to omega by c. So, this will become minus j omega by c u and j omega is nothing but minus d t. So, it will this will be written as 1 by c d u by d t. So, this is nothing but the initial equation that we had also in the case of one dimensional a b c. So, this is the exact equation. So, this is making us feel confident that the formulation what we have arrived at is the right equation for any angle theta. Now, we can compute the value of the reflection coefficient. This illustration here is a funny way of representing what ideal observer should look like. You have something you are yelling at a wall and then it gets reflected. Ideally, nothing gets reflected, but the real world is not like that. You get something reflected and what is getting reflected is something that we can compute in the form of the reflection coefficient and that is what we are doing here. The value of the reflection coefficient is going to give us what is going to be the numerical reflection that we are going to get out of the particular boundary and it is going to be given by cos theta minus 1 divided by cos theta plus 1. It becomes 0 at theta equal to 0 like in the case of one dimensional ABC like we discussed earlier. Clearly as I said for two and three dimensional case we cannot have this exact condition satisfied exact ABC is not possible. So, we have to somehow come to terms with this when we are modeling ABC in two and three dimensional case. We have du by dx given by minus j kx u x comma y which we derived before. We can improve the order of accuracy for this particular problem by going higher in order because here the order of truncation is going to be very low. We can increase this accuracy by improving the value that we are going to compute for the boundary condition. What I mean by that is we can improve this boundary condition itself if we can get a better approximation for k of x and that is what we are going to do now. We are going to substitute the value of k of x as k square minus k y square square root. So, this is directly from this equation k square is equal to k x square plus k y square. This is the wave number it has x component and y component and that is what we are going to substitute here. Once we do that we know that we can expand this a little bit. So, what I am going to do is I am going to change this equation a little bit by taking k out of this square root as follows. So, what I am going to do is du by dx is equal to minus j I have got the square root k square minus k y square multiplied by u itself. Now, I am going to take the value of k outside the equation when I do that I have a square root again I will have 1 minus k y divided by k the whole square close the bracket multiplied by u and I know that I can expand this particular term using the Taylor series because k y divided by k whole square is going to be less than 1. And because of this I can use the Taylor series expansion to compute the value for this particular term using the Taylor series and this is something I have derived on the paper and you see that step by step here. And now we are expanding the value of this term using the Taylor series as follows. So, here we are able to get the value of dy square with not only the first term, but also the second term. So, the second term is going to improve the order of accuracy of the boundary condition because only with this first term we are limited in the accuracy. So, we are bringing the second term also into the equation. So, this is again can be simplified by using the following approximation. What I have got here is du by dx is equal to minus j k 
u plus j 2 k k y square and u. Now I know I can do the same thing for d u by d y and I will get a set of equation. Let me do that for d u by d y and see how I can club that equation into this equation. What I am going to do is I am going to differentiate u with respect to y first time. So, what I will get is minus j k y u and now I am going to differentiate it second time d square u by d y square this is going to be equal to minus j and I will get another minus j here. So, this minus j multiplied by minus j will become plus j square and this will be equal to minus 1 and I will get k y square and u again and that is what you are going to see in this particular expression here. You know how we got this equation by differentiating u with respect to y twice. Once I know this is the value for d square u by d y square I can directly plug it in in the case of k y square because remember in the case of the equation what we have here we have a term for k y square u. So, I can substitute the value of k y square u as d square u by d y square that is what I am going to do here and I get now second order accurate a b c for the two dimensional problem. And this is boundary condition called as Enquist master boundary condition named after two eminent mathematician who introduced this type of boundary condition and uh, the reflection coefficient like in the case before is uh, going to be calculated for this particular boundary condition as well because we have a second order accurate that means we are our reflection coefficient is going to get improved. So, what we get as a reflection coefficient for this particular problem is given by this equation cos theta plus 1 by 2 sin square theta minus 1 divided by cos theta minus 1 by 2 sin square theta plus 1. Remember in the previous case what we had as reflection coefficient is cos theta minus 1 divided by cos theta plus 1. In this case what you are getting is cos theta plus 1 also there, but you also have a term that is coming additionally. So, this is a second order accurate. So, you have additional terms on the numerator and denominator and you can interpret this equation by a way that I have shown that you have an additional term coming into play because we are getting a higher order accurate C for the definition for k of y. So, now when we plug theta equal to 0 in this equation you should ideally get the reflection to be 0 and that is what we are seeing here. When you put theta equal to 0 this entire equation becomes 0 because cos theta will become 1 and this will become 0 and cos theta minus 1 and then cos theta plus 1 is at the bottom. So, this entire equation will become 0. So, this particular way we can expand the boundary condition obviously we have to substitute the value for the first term as well what we are going to do is we are going to substitute the value using omega by c and we are substituting the value for k as omega by c as well and we can multiply both sides by j omega and we will get a formulation of this sort. So, when you multiply by j omega what you will get is this term will become omega square by c and this term will become c by 2 and the other term of the j omega is going to be on the left hand side. And now we can substitute j omega is equal to minus dt. So, you will get a partial differentiation with respect to time and space on the left hand side and you have a second order differentiation with respect to space with respect to y axis on the right hand side. Again we can substitute the value omega square is equal to minus dou square by dou t square and we get the final value for the enguist machta absorbing boundary condition in this form. So, what you get is a time derivative and spatial derivative 
here on the left hand side second order time derivative and second order spatial derivative on the right hand side. This particular boundary condition is easy to implement in the case of a finite difference method where you can substitute for simple centered difference scheme on the right hand side to get the value for this particular terms and you can do both the forward in time and forward in space to get the left hand side. So we have come to the end of the absorbing boundary condition itself we will stop here at this point and we will come back and look into the most important class of boundary condition which is actually the boundary layer which is called as the perfectly matched layer and we will see that how we can implement it for finite difference method and also give hints on how we can extend it for other methods. Thank you.